Oh, lovely. Start with a little sip of tea there. Hello, my ghouls and goblins. Thank you so much for joining me for this spooky season chat. I basically just wanted to get into some excitement about the fact that we're here, basically. And we've already been here for a while. I think it's safe to say that for a lot of us, the entirety of October is definitely already getting into the, the spooky season spirit. But I think for me right now, I'm just extremely hyper for this beautiful profound time of year this very potent sort of spiritual sucker punch to the witchhood that is Samhain uh just really on the corner now right on the horizon just over that bend so I'm very excited and I just wanted to talk about what is going on with me what are the themes this year for me and what I've been going through what I've been thinking about and just sort of get your perspectives on things really um, I'm very very sorry about whatever the lighting is doing and whatever the focus is doing for this video I do not really understand why things are not going my way. I have tried several different things. I've tried opening the curtains, closing the curtains, putting the soft light on, etc, etc. Opening my ensuite and putting that bathroom light on. And I just can't seem to get it to how it needs to be. So if things are in and out of focus, I'm really sorry. I do know that the best possible thing would be for me to sit on my bed and actually have the light from my window on my face on the bed. But I don't want to do that because I want you to get a glimpse of all of this lushness. Hello. Oh, my my uh, pajama pocket's sticking out. We go. Yeah, look at all this lushness. Oh my goddess. I'm so so happy. I've got my own book on the altar, which might seem rather a narcissistic move, but you know what? It's so beautiful. It's actually up for a witchy award for the most outstanding book cover for a witchcraft book. Please go ahead and vote for this book in the witchy awards uh, in all categories. If you've read it and you like it and you've seen it, and as I do, you think it's absolutely magnificent to behold visually, I will leave down below everything that you need to do to be involved in the votes for the witchy awards for Rebel Witch. Um, so yes, I just sort of got my hands on my altar and changed things up yesterday and that's just made me feel even more seasonal. So how is everything going for everybody this particular spooky season? Are you into it? Are you feeling it? I know that it's not every single year that you're going to be feeling it. I know that for me there have definitely been years in the past where it just really wasn't that much on my radar and I actually felt bad about it and I felt guilty for it and I felt weird about it and like my witchhood had kind of gone on holiday a little bit because I wasn't feeling it and I wasn't in the mood. So I think the first thing I want to go ahead and say is that if you're not feeling it, that's fine. You know, uh, it's not for every single year that you're going to be completely like balls to the wall into the Samhain vibes and feeling like you could really use that, you know, you can really use the potency of this particular moment energetically. You might not be so linked in and connected with the themes and that's okay. Uh, you might not be practicing as much as usual uh, for whatever reason and that also is okay. So I just wanted to say that because I know when I was, um, well I was going to say when I was younger but I'm sure this will come up for me again at a certain point too in my practice. I definitely made myself feel crappy for not being super into it and for you know, just really not being in the mood, not wanting to do a ritual, not feeling like I really could connect with what this season meant for me. So, you know, that's okay. That's fine as well. And I just wanted to put that out there. I don't know if I already mentioned the tea that I'm drinking. I'm drinking Spiced Apple by Taylors of Harrogate. I really like this particular tea. Anything spiced apple um, or apple in some way is good for me for Samhain. I just think it's got that that sort of bobbing apple, toffee apple, Halloween vibe. But uh, apples are also sacred to my matron, Hell, the Norse goddess of the underworld. And so, um, yeah, it just it gives me a, a, a seasonal sort of vibe. So I really like apple tea at this time of year. Mm. Um, I also really like, well, I was going to say I like citrus for, for Samhain, but actually I just like citrus all year round. I'm going to go ahead and burn some vanilla orange incense now while I just get comfy and cosy and chat to you at one of my favourite places in my home. So the, the mood for me, the, the sort of feeling for me this Samhain is definitely fun. I'm definitely merging Halloween and Samhain imagery a lot. I do that every year, but it varies from year to year the extent to which I'm going to do that. And this year, it's definitely fair to say that my altar has a much, uh, much more Halloween flavour than it has done in some previous years. 
and I did post a picture of my altar setup the other day on Instagram and I have had people asking me if I'm going to be doing a tour. I'm definitely not going to do an in-depth tour of my spooky season altar but I will take you around it later and there'll be timestamps for everything so you'll be able to go to those those parts of the video if you want to see what is on my altar and why basically. Um, okay so let me just pop this in here oh that's lovely already I'm already I'm feeling that was a good idea darlings so yeah definitely fun definitely Halloween vibes definitely inner child is coming through for me quite strongly I also feel like there's a lot of spiritual focus this year for me personally this is a very potent Samhain um, and one thing that, that I've really noticed that's coming through for me this year is that last year my Samhain was very much connected to the need to release some things that were really, you know, painful. So things to do with the past, things to do with my personal history, things I needed to get very much tied up so I could move on. And also letting go of some feelings and some mindsets and a specific connection um, you know, and all of those things. So there was a lot of need for release and it was pretty much all stunted. So last Samhain was really interesting because I had the best of intentions for this very deep work that I needed to do that was to do with release and it was to do with, you know, really liberating myself from these things that were not healthy not self-loving necessarily, but actually it was all kind of put on ice. It was put on hold and I didn't do a lot of the work that I had wanted to, to do for Samhain last year. And I'd envisioned myself doing it in the run up to Samhain. I'm sure that people have had experiences like this before as you come up to like a big Sabbath or a big astrological event or you come up to your birthday or you're coming up to New Year and you're thinking to yourself, this is it, I'm going to completely let go, I'm going to embrace this time as the moment to release or to receive or to get clear or to get real or to get serious, you know, and then you recognise as you're moving very fast towards it that you are not ready in some way and you're still clinging hold of whatever it is that you know intellectually you really need to to get rid of to release to say goodbye to um maybe you you felt like you wanted to really bring something in or you wanted to be strong and reach out for something at some specific time on the calendar but as that time on the calendar approaches you recognize you know what i I, I was hurtling towards that jump and it's like the horse of me and my my motivation has sort of stalled and almost thrown me over. Um, you know, so I definitely had that experience last year, big time. And as I shared with my, I shared privately with my Patreon group not long ago, it's really interesting because this year, the vibe that I'm very much getting is that the release work that I wanted to do last year and that I was very excited about, but I realized I couldn't do, now is more the time. And at first I felt really disappointed with myself about that. And I felt kind of embarrassed I felt embarrassed inside myself, you know. I was like, okay, so it's taken another 12 months to come to the point where you could genuinely experience that release and experience that letting go that you had wanted all that time ago. But you know what? Sometimes that's just exactly the way it needs to happen. And it's, it's rolled around in this perfect form. And I'm going to take it for what it is. And I'm going to be grateful for what that is for me and what that means for me, rather than berating myself for it taking longer than I thought it was going to take on paper, you know? I feel like there's definitely a massive feeling of realism this year when it comes to the Samhain energy. I'm tapping into this desire to look at the shadows in society, to look at the shadows shadows within me to look at the things that it tends to be really difficult to do or to deal with and that I have great resistance to, to look at the things that I'm really afraid of and how those things are reinforced by the fear that society or the media um, tend to, to generate inside me or to kind of like um, to encourage inside of me. For the Pop-Tarts live stream that we did earlier this month on Patreon, we discussed for an entire hour some of the shadow themes that you could say are connected to the Samhain energy, including dealing with loss and heartbreak. We talked about fear of aging. Uh, we talked about psychological and magical attack. Uh, we talked about collective shadows. So, you know, when you feel like society is really kind of showcasing its shadow side and you're seeing lots of the more shadowy face of who people can be when they are in groups and when they're pushing for things. Um, so we talked about like how we feel about the about political activities happening 
changing how we feel about our response to the news and um, and holding on to our own sense of truth and integrity at times where it feels like that is very scarce from what we can see around us, you know. So very, very, very real themes, very real discussion taking place there and really not for the faint of heart. I was really surprised anyone turned up, but for those of you who actually were there for the live and for those of you who watched the playback on Patreon, thank you. Um, that has meant a lot to me that I could really go to the bone with some of those topics that are difficult and that certainly are scary and can sometimes be upsetting. But doing that, like having that discussion in a, in a as part of group work and doing it in that way was really powerful, you know, and it got me thinking in a lot of new ways about things too. So there is definitely a realism for me, this Samhain too, as well as obviously, I guess that's offset by this very playful vibe that I have going on in that sense that Halloween and Samhain are kind of having this really lovely little interlocking dance for me this year. Um, I decided to put some seasonal, <laughs> seasonal witchy nails on and uh, hilarious. I'm loving these. Uh, I can't do anything in them. I can barely type at all. I'm like flattening my, <laughs> flattening my hand against the keyboard like that. But it's worth it just for a couple more days. And then I need to take them off because I am writing another book at the moment. And these are not conducive to the tap, tap, tapping process, my loves. As many of you will be aware, if you follow me on Instagram, I have actually created a dedicated space for my matron goddess, Hell. So, um, um, the hell imagery that is usually evident on my altar has not actually been on my altar for a few months now. I think I've had my dedicated hell altar for three months, three and a half, four months, something like that. Um, and that's been a really big level up for me. That's been a really useful thing to have. I think it's strengthened my relationship with hell, that there is this dedicated space that is just for reflection around her devotion to her communion with her, you know, throwing the runes for her, going through the beads for her, speaking with her, basically. It's been really good to have that place that I can go to every day. I definitely haven't been going every single day, but it's lovely to know that it is there. And I've been going there so much because I really feel like it just taps me straight into that energy you know in a much more sort of um straightforward way it's like a it's like a shortcut it's like a visual and psycho spiritual shortcut um and as usual I will definitely throw this out there I do not think in any way that anybody needs an altar or a shrine to anything or anyone to be able to click in with them very potently but like let's face it a lot of witches and spiritual people do find it useful and that's me included I definitely find it to be useful so I will be giving you a little glimpse of my hell altar on another occasion but you can definitely see it over on Instagram I'll leave some links down below that will show you what is happening at my hell altar and it's been a really beautiful experience to have that so that's something that I would say is very useful for the time of Samhain because it is very sacred to my matron. I do a lot of work with Hell over this particular time. And then right the way on through Yule and over into Imbolc, there is definitely a massive, massive focus on my work with my matron and everything that that represents, everything that that can be to me, everything that that means. So it's really nice for the first time ever to have a dedicated Hell altar. And I would say it's an altar. It, it, it's, it's got shrine vibes, but it's definitely a working altar and that's really beautiful to have and it's also given me a lot more room for other things to happen over in this space as well which is really awesome and the other thing I wanted to mention was that I definitely think that there are a couple of new presences coming into my awareness coming into my sort of um my uh, practice and that's been interesting um, and by that I mean there are a couple of new beings on the scene. Um, one of them has been with me for a very long time now since I was a child and I will be talking in another video about the connection that I have with her and how that's always been something that's that's been with me but I've really thought more about the symbolic aspects of why it would be that that being would be so central to me and so interesting to me and I'm really excited to talk about this particular being who is from the Greek pantheon um, because I am I know that there are a lot of people that follow my work and engage with with what I'm saying and like seem to get me that also understand just how important and vital this being is and, and just like how fucking just epic and radical this being is 
So I'm very excited about that. And there is definitely a god um, winking at me as well. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I do work with a patron god, and that is Tia from the Norse Pantheon. Um, I don't actually work with god energy or sort of like divine masculine energy, if you will, uh, that much at all. But I certainly do recognise him. And he is a, a being, a figure that is important to me and came into my life at a very sort of potent time that was connected to healing that I was doing around um, around interactions with men and around paternal energy and what that means, etc., and what that's meant in my life. So um, he's definitely more of a backseat type of character and uh, has never really vied to be anything more than that. Uh, but there's a lot of respect there, let's put it that way. And it's very interesting to have another, another god uh, that just keeps coming up and keeps kind of... Uh, hanging around and asking to be studied and asking to be considered and um you know for me the way that i work with with um deity i know is not necessarily easy for everybody to understand for some people it seems to be that whenever i describe it they say oh my god that's exactly what i think and feel that's exactly where i'm coming from as well which is amazing um but for other people it's like what are you talking about are you a polythe i don't get it what's happening um so i'm not going to i'm not going to fall all over myself to try and explain what it what it really is or how it works because i think the the material that I've put out there it's got to at this point be enough for you to either get it or don't get it and come away with whatever it is that you come away with but I'm excited to have access to this other sort of male god energy that's highly representative of me and a big part of who I am um and that's really interesting and this god is also from the greek pantheon so maybe you want to play the guessing game down below i don't know but i will be making separate videos on those particular entities and why it is that i think they're coming through and the interest that i have in them and how that's going to work and i, I really want to talk more about deity work i know that always gets a, a really engaged response when i talk about it here on the channel and i love knowing what you guys are doing what are you up to and who are you working with how do you feel about things I find that to be really interesting. Um, and I also want to thank you also uh, for the, the really engaged and really interesting response to the last video that I put out about deity, about the fear around working with deities and how we can deal with fear mongering and gatekeeping and that kind of thing in the community that we're all running around in. So thank you very much for your interest in that video and, and really sort of coming to me with your perspectives on it because I do find did find that to be really interesting subject matter and if you haven't seen that and you'd like to watch it, I'll leave the link for that down below as well. And there is also a playlist where I've put together all of the things that I've said about working with deity so far, about the goddess connections that I have, about working with deity more broadly, and about some of the things that I have managed to help my clients and my audience members with over time. And I have seen fit to sort of put them together into video resources i will leave that playlist down below for you i'm definitely not going to be doing anything you know super official and kind of um, dedication oriented at Samhain for these two new beings i just thought i'd mention them because they're the sort of sense that they are asking for attention or that i would need to place focus onto their themes and energies is coming thicker and faster as i approach this thinning of the veil so that's really exciting for me for sure um i also think that alongside the big release energy that I'm experiencing that's been 12 months in the making uh, that I, I apparently wasn't ready for this Samhain but I am ready for now sorry apparently I wasn't ready for it last Samhain but I am ready for it now um, alongside that there is definitely a massive theme of protection boundaries holding that really strong beautiful protection energy making sure that you know, I am on lock, as I like to say, and I think that's going to be a, a massive part of the of the Samhain energy as well. Uh, I will be doing two rituals. One of them will be a massive release ritual and, uh, you know, just really clicking in with the theme of release as it applies to Samhain. And then also I'm going to be doing a separate ritual, which is going to be very much dedicated to hell. And it's going to involve a massive address to hell and all of that good jazz. And it's going to be really interesting to use the dedicated hell altar for that particular ritual. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, there will be some protection magic happening here at the time of the thinning of the veil. And as well as all, as, as all of that, I will be... Um, dressing up and having some Halloween shenanigans with a few choice friends, I should imagine as well. So that will be cool. So as I mentioned, you know, I really do like Halloween and there are certain years where Samhain and the sort of, you know, the really holy witchhood soaked time of Samhain is much more 
interlinking with Halloween and there are some years where there isn't that that's not so much happening and it's very very Samhain oriented you know um this year there's definitely that really awesome interplay and I very much enjoy that interplay it pleases my inner child to have that interplay I do understand that Halloween is not for everybody and not all witches really vibe with a lot of the playful themes of Halloween. I would love to know down below what about Halloween turns you on, turns you off, what are you really into? How much do you think that Samhain and Halloween actually have an interplay in your practice, if indeed they do at all? Are they very separate? Do you try and make sure that they remain very separate? Um, or do you feel like the imagery of Halloween and the themes of Halloween come into your Samhain practice? I would be really interested to know. Uh, one thing that I may do this year that I have never done before, and some people are going to think this is wild, but I have never carved a pumpkin before in my life. Pumpkin carving is something that has evaded me throughout time. Um, I've had a few opportunities to carve a pumpkin. Uh, times where other people were carving pumpkins and were inviting me to come along, Kellyanne come along and we'll do pumpkin carving. We're going to go to a pumpkin patch, get our pumpkins and then we're going to have some drinks and do pumpkin carving. Sounds beautiful, right? Sounds cosy and lovely and everything that I would want in an evening. For some reason, it's just never appealed to me to carve a fucking pumpkin. I don't know what it is. It looks like it's going to be tiring, messy, um, it looks like it's going to be one of those things where my left arm is going to be aching the next day and my right arm isn't because I'm left-handed and I can just imagine scooping all of the pulp and stuff out of the pumpkin and carving the pumpkin. I really worry about getting it wrong. I think the, I think my Virgo moon's a little on edge to interact with the pumpkin carving thing. So I've actually never done it. Uh, this year, I may carve a pumpkin. I have a particular friend who is very insistent that now is the time, the time has fucking come, for me to actually bite that pumpkin bullet. So that might be happening this year, which will be interesting. Um, we don't get much trick-or-treating around here. We don't really get children trick-or-treating that much. I don't really know where we are with trick-or-treating in the UK anymore. Um, obviously, COVID notwithstanding, naturally. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't even know where we were with it before. I think it depends whereabouts you are. Like, where? what is your environment? Uh, are, there, are there loads of apartments or are there houses? Do you all go together in a group or what? I don't know. I'm, I'm classically child-free in this situation. I don't really know what's what. But I do keep sweets in case the buzzer does ring, okay? I do like nothing more than to hand lots of sweets to excited children that are dressed up as various things. Um, so I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the trick-or-treating spirit. If kids want to um, ring my bell, they, they definitely do get, uh, they get the love and the attention that I want to give them. <laughs> I want to be everybody's Halloween auntie, apparently. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we don't really get much of that round here. Um, and, you know, I, I I think this year, the excitement that I feel about the season um, and the excitement that I feel about Halloween. And I mean, I love horror films. I love watching horror films with people. I love getting all my Halloween decorations out. You know, I love drinking from my Halloween mug, mm. mm. etc. So... I've got all different trinkets and things people have sent me over time while I've been doing my work in the public eye, as it were. So I've got all these little things I get out. And I think a lot of that this year for me is also tied in with being single and being really happily single and just not having anyone on the horizon, nothing on the agenda. I am as single as single can be, okay? That's just, it's just, it's so dead here. It's so dead when it comes to romance. <laughs> um, so... It's really interesting because I'm having just this incredible romance with the season and I just feel so excited and I feel so, I feel so fizzy and in love with myself and the season, the vibe of it all um, is really helping with that. Um, last year I experienced a lot of sadness in the form of nostalgia. I know a lot of people are going to know what I mean by that. You know, it's a very, you go through September with, which is kind of like that transition month in terms of the weather. You get a lot of memories coming up from years before. Um, 2020 Halloween was was kind of difficult for me. You know, September was difficult for me. That first cold smell of the air turning at the very end of September was really tough for me because it reminded me of 2019. Um, you know, and there was a lot of feelings and, and associations there. So this year to, to get that turning of the air, and I remember exactly when it happened. It was 30th of September. I walked out of my flat, walked down the stairs at the front of my flat, and I was like the air has turned it's here 
the season is here. And I just like felt this incredible fizziness and this beautiful, sparkly, crackly feeling all over my body. It was like fireworks night inside my body. And I love that. I fucking love that. And I didn't feel that sadness and that nostalgia and that desire to sort of like grab at something that I had before. It was here, it was now, it was happening, and I felt so joyous. I'm very excited to talk to you guys about decks and books and stuff like that, but first of all, let me just say, I did actually get a couple of themed tattoos this year, which is really exciting. I got um, some witchy hands making the Baphomet symbol. I will um, put some cutaways on the screen now. And I also got a string of teeth on my ankle. So definitely some Samhain themed tattoo action happening, and I'm really, really pleased with that. And on the 2nd of November I am booked in for a custom tattoo that I'm really excited about as well. Um, I might explain that at another time. It's not as sort of seasonally relevant but it's just something that I'm super excited about. Um, so yeah I uh, for some reason it's it's felt like this time where it's appropriate to get permanently inked you know. Um, I think that that might go on to become a tradition um, in terms of you know getting some ink at around the time of Samhain. It just feels like there's this interesting spiritual urgency and spiritual sort of um I don't know calling to to uh brand myself yeah uh it's really interesting so that's come through and, and been intriguing so okay I always buy myself at least one deck for Samhain that's been a tradition of mine for I think since 2015 2014 2015 I've been gifting myself decks um so for this year I gifted myself the Tattoo Tarot Ink and Intuition deck absolutely love it absolutely love it um I know that for a lot of people this is the deck that made them realize that they did want to and can work with decks that have non-illustrative pips, you know, like that, for example, where you've not really got uh, a, a sort of very pictorial element. It's, it's just uh, literally the swords or the pentacles or the cups, you know. Because this is so beautiful, it actually made some people go ahead and buy, despite the fact that they don't usually like working with decks where it's just, you know, non-illustrative pip cards. Um, but but because it's just so stunning, it sort of made people cross their own line in order to be able to work with this deck. And I definitely can see why. I absolutely love it. I'm so happy that I bought it. So, so happy. Um, I also gifted myself another deck for Samhain. I thought, you know what, why not just splash out on myself a bit this year? So I bought the Star Spinner Tarot. I really love this. This is like if an Art Nouveau deck went to live in space and took acid. That's the vibe that this deck gives me, you know. Um, I really love it. I've been working with it a hell of a lot with clients. Um, and I actually worked with it really quickly um, for with clients. I don't know if this is focusing or not because I just do not understand what the fuck is going on with this phone today. But, you know, who knows? I don't really care so, so much. Um, my channel is not intended to be uh, aesthetically overwhelming or anything it's just me chatting shit basically um most of the time so oh i love that hermit card so cool so yeah even less than 24 hours after i opened this baby i was using it for a client it was a client i've done a lot of work with that i knew it would be okay if we tried some new imagery as soon as i'd received it and i was not disappointed uh it really gives great readings now I did go ahead and let myself order a third deck and it's the Golden Art Nouveau Tarot. I was really excited about it. I was thinking about using it for my Samhain reading that I'm gonna give to myself because I do a Samhain reading every year. Um, but it has not arrived, unfortunately. I had to get a refund because um, for some reason the original package went missing and now I've ordered from another seller, um, but I don't know when it's gonna get here. So, But I'm very, very excited about that. I love the idea of having a traditional tarot deck that has the gold you know filigree type of elements on it so I'm just really thrilled it looks really beautiful when other people are using it so I can't wait to get my hands on it I want to tell you what I've been using as my Halloween themed deck so I usually get a lot of different stuff out. I usually always have my Bohemian Gothic tarot um, I usually use my zombie tarot there's a few different things I tend to use every year. I use my Vintage Wisdom Oracle by Victoria Mosley. That's got, for me, a very sound vibe. Um, this year, I've really only gone for 
Um, I've still used Vintage Wisdom Oracle um, by my wondrous friend Victoria Mosley. She's no longer with us, and uh, so it, it means uh, it means even more to me than you could say it ever did um, that I can use this at the time of Samhain um, in her honour. And this is just such a vibe. This deck is all the vibes all the time. It's so fucking beautiful, um, and I love using it for this time of year, and I definitely will use this for part of my Samhain reading that I'll be doing for myself. It's just really beautiful, darlings, honestly. So gorgeous. Um, and I'm I'm also only using Halloween Tarot. That is the only Halloween theme deck I've used, or sort of spooky season themed deck, if you will, is Halloween Tarot. So everybody who ordered a reading from me for this spooky season found themselves looking at these cards. Um, I just really love these cards. You know, they're they're so beautiful. They're playful. Um, you know, they are very very Halloweeny. Look at this like haunted house for the tower card. Very awesome. Um, I love the backing. Just makes me feel super seasonal. I love the world card. So yeah, that is the only Halloween deck I've been using is literally the Halloween Tarot. I know a lot of people work with it all year round and they've said to me, Kellyanne, if you love it so much, just use it all year round. I do, I use it all year round. But you know what? No, to me, that would be like leaving a Christmas tree up all year just because you really like it. So why not have it up all year? The reason we don't have it up all year is so we get that feeling that it's time for the tree. OK, um, not that I can relate to that feeling. I don't give a fuck about Christmas. But, you know, when you when you feel Christmassy, that's part of what makes you feel Christmassy is that for the rest of the year, you don't wear your Christmas jumpers or leave your tree up or, you know, pull crackers or whatever. So no, I don't want to work with this all the time. I want to put this away after Halloween and have to wait for a whole other year to bring it out again um, because that is what makes a meal of it. That's what makes you feel like you're in the spooky season, you know, is that you have to come out of the spooky season at some point. But I can understand why people use it all year round. It's a very charming deck. I'm going to rave a little bit about books now because who doesn't love getting under a blanket at the spooky season when the nights are drawing in and everything's getting colder and you've just got your cocoa or a nice warming like mulled wine or whatever you've got. And uh, yeah, it's just so decadent to have a read, okay? I'm all about the turning of those those pages and the candles flickering oh my god it just really gets you in the mood so I want to talk a little bit about what I'm reading what I'm going to be reading what is giving me sort of that autumnal vibe and what is specifically clicking me into um Samhain as well so um look at this first of all just behold this okay you will not be sorry this edition of Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher and Other Stories is very very sumptuous is it not how much did it cost me three pounds it cost me three pounds it's got that marbled inlay just so oh my god how how seasonal is this darlings how seasonal is this i love 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 it um it's just very very beautiful this book um sadly no illustrations uh which is a shame because you would think there would be some illustrations in this book looking at it you know um but still very very beautiful looking book there so i'm excited to read some edgar Allan poe because hello it's like it's halloween time i mean that's what you do right and also predictable very predictable but i'm definitely going to give wuthering heights a little bit of a not a reread but just to dip into a few scenes that i really love and i want to reread because it's just you know it's definitely it's definitely vibes i don't know if anybody watches uncarly she's a booktuber she's amazing um but she was talking the other day about sort of seasonal autumnal reads you know and helping people out with finding autumnal reads um and she said you know uh, about wuthering heights literally throwing yourself on someone's grave vibes <laughs> <laughs> straight vibes um so and she's right this is a big mood for the season um i love this particular edition i love the hot pink i don't love this price uh thingy but i need to pull it off and I, I couldn't be asked to do it before the before i started filming uh but yeah i really like this edition i bought it uh i think three years ago now because i do own a couple of amazing editions of wuthering heights obviously because i'm really a goth bitch i mean <laughs> at the baseline of it i am kind of 
goth. <laughs> um, so I do own a few copies of it, but I just couldn't let this one pass me by. I just really love the look of it. I'm currently reading this book about Alexander McQueen, Blood Beneath the Skin. I wanted to mention it not only because I find Alexander McQueen's designs and his artistry to have been so unbelievably of the season, you know, very, very sour and very dark, very shadowy, quite gothic, etc. And dealing with really scary themes, horror themes in, in a sense, a lot of the time. Um, and also the exquisite as fuck tailoring, um, just, I don't know, just gives me a very sour vibe, don't ask me. Uh, but I also just wanted to mention it because the cover is quite Halloween-y, so. Um, and part of the tattoo I'm going to be getting on November the 2nd is in honour of him. Um, but it's it's actually going to be a portrait of Isabella Blow, but she's going to be wearing Alexander McQueen um, referenced from an image. So um, that's part of it as well. So I wanted to mention that. So let me talk about some other things, new things I'm going to be dipping into that I'm quite excited about. I've got Daily Magic here by Judica Ills. Um, I'm very excited to start reading this. This is literally um, a detail about magic magic and witchcraft from around the world and through history for every single day of the year so I figured I really may as well begin it on on Samhain um so I'm going to start from October 31st let's have a little look here we go um October 31st we've got Days of the Dead, Samhain, Halloween um we've got Samhain Down Under um and let's have a look there is a crossroads cleansing spell here there is a halloween love spell here um and dumb suppers is described and spirits of the night um there's a, a list of spirits of the night there's information about fairies oh my goddess this is uh this is a very lovely big juicy um list of, of lots of different things i'm going to learn a lot from this book i know so i'm going to start that on october 31st that's going to be a really lovely thing to dip into throughout the year i'm also going to start reading this book by lisa miller the awakened brain the psychology of spirituality and our search for meaning so that's going to be one of my next reads as well and I also wanted to talk about some cosy things, okay? I'm all about the coziness when it comes to uh, Halloween reading and spooky season reading. I did want to show you my tattered and battered and very loved copy of Interview with the Vampire because I'm definitely going to be dipping into that over the next few days to really just sort of like get the sour and juices coursing um, through my undead veins. But I can't seem to find it at the moment. I think I might have dropped it down the side of my bed <laughs> because I was already getting into the mood. From the end of September onwards I was like right where's interview with the vampire I really want to want to sort of just like sink my teeth into a few of those chapters you know but I'm definitely going to be reading that because I find that very cozy I'm going to curl up with some Ram Das. this is his book Polishing the Mirror which I'm going to enjoy reading um, I find Bubba Ram to be super warming like a beautiful vegan stew so I'm definitely going to enjoy reading that uh, over a few cold nights of being single. Okay, Ram Dass will be my boyfriend forever. Um, I'm going to read some Charles Baudelaire. Flowers of Evil is a really beautiful poetry collection. I absolutely love 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 Baudelaire um I love Baudelaire so much that I've written poems about this poet <laughs> I write poetry about this man who wrote poetry um so yeah I'm very excited to just sit and curl up with some Baudelaire uh just find something really comforting and warming about his very decadent very hedonistic um wine soaked poetry you know and another poet that I like to curl up with is E. Cummings so there's very much a warming vibe here with um, uh, with his poetry as well and I will definitely read myself a few of Shakespeare's sonnets um that also has a very autumnal seasonal type of vibe to it so if anybody is wondering poetically what I'm getting into that would be that um I'm going to enjoy also reading the line the witch in the wardrobe I'm going to read myself a few scenes from that. This is the book I've had since I was a child um, of, uh, you know, The Magician's Nephew. You've got the line, The Witch and the Wardrobe, and you've also got The Horse and His Boy in this edition. Um, so, yeah, oh, look at that beautiful autumnal seasonal purple inside. Very regal and warming. So, yeah, that's basically what I'm going to be reading, um, what I'm going to be sort of flicking through books wise I just tend to find there's something so atmospheric about having a book stack that's really carefully curated and you've really thought what you want to read and why so 
I'm excited about that. Darlings, I have very much loved just sitting and having a chat with you about what's going on for me this particular Samhain season and how I'm feeling, what my rituals are going to be about, decks, books, etc. I'm going to give you a little walk around my altar now so you get a feel for what's going on behind me. Uh, please let me know in the comments down below how are you feeling this spooky season, what's going on for you, what's the focus for you, uh, and anything else that you'd like to let me know. And if you are a doll face or a pop tart over in my Patreon, then you will also be getting an afterthoughts episode along with this video where I'm going to go much more deeply into my plans for the release ritual, how it's all going to work, how I design rituals for something like Samhain um, and some tips and tricks for what I would recommend for making sure that you get the most out of this really potent time of year. So if you would like to watch that video, the afterthoughts video, you can pop over. If you are not a, uh, a member of my Patreon yet and you've been thinking about it, please go over and have a look at what I provide with all of the tiers um and uh you know see if you might want to come along and hang out with us on the discord or be a part of the lives get access to the printables get access to the one card riff and all that good jazz okay darlings much much love and blessed be Mwah. Hey, welcome to this little extra bit where I kind of talk you briefly through what is going on with my Samhain altar if you wanted to be in the know. Um, okay, so there's quite a few different workings going on here, baby cakes. Quite a few different things. I'm not going to explain in massive depth what they are, but I'm going to talk you through some of the sort of more active witchier elements, first of all. Okay, so first of all, over on this side, you can see this little blue box. This was a gift to me from a subscriber. There is some Something going on in here that is magical, uh, that is charging away at the moment and will come out for the Samhain ritual. So I'm very excited to bring that into the sacred space. Um, just knowing that I've been sort of focusing on it, filling it with potency. I've been putting my hands over it during my daily meditations. I'm um, just coming here, really just putting intention into that particular box. Uh, there's also something charging over here in this rather lovely looking box. Let me move this tea light. So yeah, there's something going on in here as well. I really, really love this box um, that uh, contained a birthday present from a beloved auntie of mine many moons ago. So I'm doing something witchy in there as well. Something witchy is happening in there. And then over on this side, if I take you over here, um, you can see that there is a mix happening here. This is for my cauldron. I have already been using some of this in my cauldron for some work that I have been doing since the beginning of October. And it symbolizes certain things. You know, I put it together in a very intentional way from a few other different mixes that I had that I purchased over the course of time. And then this is a working that is active at the moment. Um, I won't go into the all the ins and outs of that, but you can rest assured that that is something witchy that is happening as well. Um, I'm not a person that likes to massively share every little thing they're doing, sweethearts, as I'm sure that lots of you can appreciate. Um, I don't know if you might have seen, as I sort of moved the water around, that down here on the floor in front of me, there's actually some chilli powder, um, which is part of a working that I'm doing too. Um, so yeah, I'm very busy at the moment, very busy with my witchy stuff happening. Um, okay, so you can see here I've got my Aquarian Tarot. Not No particular reason, really. I'm just sort of letting it marinate in the witchy energy energies on my altar. Um, I've got a little bit more of a different mix happening here that I may um, use at another time during the season. I wanted to put my Rebel Witch book there because I just think it's so seasonally appropriate. It makes me think about what I've achieved and what I want to go on and achieve with the second book. It's an opportunity to honour the effort that I've put in to my witchhood and my journey. So that's why I wanted it on the altar and it's really nice to have it there. It was like a very spontaneous decision, but I'm glad that I made that decision. Um, I've got my chimes here. Many of you will know that I'm big into using my chimes pretty much on a daily basis for my chanting, for my meditations and devotionals. Um, so I've always got my chimes nearby, basically. Um, this is not a magical working that's happening here. This is just basically, as you can see, I love me some doll parts. Um, doll parts are really aesthetically pleasing to me. They're really meaningful in a way that for me goes kind of like beyond language to be able to explain. But there's just something about doll parts that really connects me with my most early and primal sense of witchhood inside myself, you know? Um, I also think that obviously visually, aesthetically, it's very appropriate for this season. So I've always loved working with these hands. Now, these hands are very special. They come from a very old doll that I had for many years growing up. Um, she was actually sort of a mother superior nun. 
she wasn't a vintage china doll she was a present from you but she was a present for me when i was a child and um uh, it got to a point with her her name was bernadette it got to a point with her where i wasn't really using her very much anymore and she was just basically staying all the time on a shelf in my room and i wasn't using her and then it occurred to me that i wanted to pull her apart for the parts and also for the crosses that were on her and that she was going to be a very magically significant uh, doll for me but in a different way as part as opposed to as the whole doll. Uh, this might sound horrifying to some and for others of you it's going to sound very understandable. Uh, so these are Bernadette's arms and I've got them reaching up into the sky to represent the power and the intensity of the magic and ritual that can take place at the time of Samhain and I've got some crystals um, and I really love artificial flowers so I've got some flowers there basically that's a representation of the power that I'm going to be putting into what is happening this month you know everything I've got set up and planned the ritual I'm doing etc uh, really bringing things to me and keeping things away from me as well please thank you <laughs> Uh, I've got my crystal ball out. You will see it is uncovered. It's not always uncovered, but today that it is. Um, I really love working with my crystal ball at all times of year. But uh, again, I think there's something very aesthetically pleasing about having it on the altar at this time of year. I also do offer um, Sow and Crystal Wisdom readings at this time of year, and they're very popular. So I do need to have the ball out and ready to go and, you know, constantly doing its thing. Uh, that little uncovered eye because I use it for clients a lot of the time and I do my um, my crystal uh, crystal wisdom readings here on the altar so it's really super special I've got some decorations up here uh, this is Boris the spider because all spiders are called Boris um, I don't really have any names for the um, the ghost and the witch but I think they're really cute I got them the other day they're new additions to my um my Halloween uh sort of um decorations and I've got here um Zen Benji my chill bat my Zen bat um he was a, a friend from uh, a friend from my present take that reverse it he was a, a present from my beautiful friend um the wonderful Frank and Lush I'm gonna leave her uh, Instagram down below like she's super creative and awesome and always gets very very seasonal so I definitely recommend you go over there and see what she's been cooking up in her wondrous vampiric world um so yeah that's a present from her which makes it even more special and in fact also my my vampire mug I'm drinking out of today is, is also a, a present from her a very considerate um present so yeah let me have a look what's going on at the front okay so you've got my cauldron at the back um this is going to get even more fiddly over the next few days because i'm filming this on the 27th i think it's going to go up on the 29th or 30th but i'm filming it on the 27th so as the next couple of days come into view i'm going to be moving the cauldron forward i'm probably going to set it here where my poppet currently is um so it's going to be pulled out and i'm going to sort of exchange a few things back and forth between the front uh, fireproof dish and the back one because the cauldron needs to come forward i'm going to be using this mix that i've made um and things are just going to get super witchy um and i'm going to do lots of fire magic and fire ritual and things with it burning stuff um so yeah the the a cauldron is there Oh, this skull here comes actually from the hell altar. I've actually moved it onto the main altar um, for the vibes, you know, really. So, and also to have a little piece of hell over on this altar, I think is important. Um, she's very much a, a representation of something important to me at this season in particular, you know, and kind of the 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 energy and the 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 sort of message that I'm going for and wanting to connect with. So that's why that's there. Uh, there are witchy things in both of these bottles. Um, both of these are charging to be put into a ritual bath um, and onto my points, my, my uh, wrist and my neck at the time of my uh, ritual. Again, I'm not going to explain what's in these bottles um, and boxes and things. I think you can appreciate that. Um, what you and you alone know is always the most potent, <laughs> um, as Odin once uh, remarked, and it's very important and true. Okay, so at the front, you'll see there's a number of different things here. I've got my pendulums. I'm working more closely with pendulums these days. Um, so yeah, I've got a, a rose quartz one there. I've got my amethyst pendulum. Um, I've actually got another rose quartz pendulum over here on my Mother Mary altar. Um, so there's, there's lots of pendulum action happening. I might put that there actually. 
Um, I always have some kind of shell on my altar to represent the fact that I live by the sea and I take a lot of power from that. Uh, I take a lot of importance from that. Um, I've got here just some harmless little skulls minding their own business. These are actually from an old set of lights. Um, and the reason I've included the skull heads is because they remind me of really beautiful times with friends. Um, I've got an oil burner because I've decided that I am going to be burning some of this oil during my ritual. I love this bay and rosemary oil. Um, uh, it's just really beautiful and it smells incredibly seasonal and awesome. So I usually don't um, burn oil combos um, for my rituals. I usually like to work with smoke with incense, you know, but uh, I'm definitely going to be making a little oil arrangement there, uh, which will be awesome. I've got uh, some doll's heads. This one's really old and important. This one's old and important, again, both for various reasons I won't go into. Um, I've got here a little poppet. That is a representative of emotional healing. I made that during a time in my life where that was important and it's come to be important again. So I've put that out there. Um, this is a gift from a subscriber that I've put here. It's got some beautiful little bits and pieces in it. I've got a frozen Charlotte here at the front. I think some of you will recognize what this is and you'll know what it is. It's a really beautiful thing to have and I get a really good, big, nice mood from it. Um, it was a, a present from a really a beautiful, valued member of the community who hopefully I'll be meeting next year. Hi, Erica, if you're watching. Um, yeah, so I have got, what else? Of course, I've got my, my spooky tea lights and stuff that come out every year. Um, uh, this was a, this is a beautiful item. I actually, let me move this. You'll see here in the background this wonderful figurine here was a present from a subscriber who made that for me. Uh, the nun was a gift from a subscriber who knows that I'm really into nuns. So um, yeah, I've, I've got lo loads of beautiful gifts um, that have made their way over onto the altar over the course of time. I'm really lucky in that way. Um, so yeah, I guess that's really about all that I wanted to say. Um, Oh yeah, I didn't mention my little pink crystal ball in the back next to the big one. I really love that. Anyway, there's basically a lot of things on here that I love and that I use. If anybody's wondering what this is, this is actually my athame. Um, it is a vintage letter opener and it is made out of ivory. I know that is really, really foul, but um, there's something about the fact that it's vintage and it's so old that I think kind of... Uh, made me feel like you know what I want this for my altar even though I really don't like the material um, that was used to make it but there's something about it that's got real potency and I feel like it was owned by somebody that had real potency so I'm just borrowing that potency darlings I'm going with the vibes um okay so yeah that's basically everything i hope that you enjoyed having this little tour around my altar space that is ready for the season and i hope that you guys are as ready for the season as you can be for your particular situations and the space that you have and everything else um and yeah very much love blessed be